G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we go through each team's New Year's resolutions for 2024. Nearly at the end of it now, we're up to the Brisbane Lions, the runners up from 2023, and then we've got the Adelaide Crows and then we're done. So if you guys want to find all of the content that I've done uh, on this particular topic, it's all in a playlist called AFL Resolutions for 2024, and this is the third individual video I've done on the Brisbane Lions. So if you're a Brisbane fan, uh, if you click up on the top right icon of this video, you can find links to other Brisbane Lions videos that I've done this off season. So uh, the point of this video is to find, you know, six to eight things for each individual club that they can tick off on a micro level that will ultimately lead to a better season overall. We're doing one for the Brisbane Lions, and again, it's hard to critique, and uh, I don't really see this video as critiquing, just looking for opportunities to improve. But at the same time, when you're talking about a club that has was so damn good in 2023 and was four points off being premiers or five points off uh, winning that grand final. That being said, I think I found, you know, seven or eight, I think, in this video where I think if Brisbane improve these little things uh, or get them right, uh, it will ultimately lead them to being in the same position they were in 2023, which is what it's all about. So let's crack into things that Brisbane should focus on in 2024 to become a better team. Uh, the first one is getting Tom Doday and Will Ashcroft ready for AFL action as soon as possible. And I don't mean rushing them back, obviously, uh, but making sure their rehabilitation process goes well and that they're ready for action again by probably the middle of the year. So Tom Dode did his ACL in June of 2023 and Ashcroft did his ACL in July. Dode obviously did his at the Adelaide Crows. Now it's fair to suggest that Brisbane didn't rely on these players because first of all Dode wasn't on the list last year but Will Ashcroft um, obviously they coped without him to get to the grand final and were so close to being premiers. That being said both of them individually add so much to the side if they come back in and start playing decent football. So Tom Dade in particular, as a bit of a replacement for Marcus Adams, again, a player that didn't play last year. But I just think, obviously, he's a quality player. But in terms of the defensive dynamic that Brisbane will have, I think he would complement uh, Jack Payne and Harris Andrews so well as that third tall sort of intercepting, rebounding defender uh, that his introduction to the side uh, will be a huge plus provided he can get fit as soon as possible. And then Will Ashcroft, obviously, is just one of the best young midfield talents in the competition. So not only short-term, but long-term. Yeah, his The continuation of his development will be an important focus. And of course, he's good enough already to improve that side in a finals tilt. So that's what I have the first one. Tom Dade and Will Ashcroft, get them as fit as possible, as early as possible. The second resolution I have is to start to or continue to facilitate a bit of a midfield transition at the Brisbane Lions. So what we see there is a very strong uh, you know, clearance side in particular. It's a good midfield, albeit a little bit slow, but we do have you know, on the one end a couple of aging stars in that midfield and then you know, some top-end talents coming up through from the bottom. So just continuing this little transition and having a little bit of a different look going forward for the Lions, I think will be important. So let's talk specifics. Dane Zorko will be 35 by round one. Uh, Lockie Neal's 30, he's probably not gonna be retiring anytime soon. There's Jared Lyons, who's already on the outer for sure. And like I said, it's a pretty strong midfield. It performs well, but it's a little bit slow. So that being said, you know, players they can give increased exposure to over time. One of them is obviously Will Ashcroft, who we talked about. Jasper Fletcher, I think as well, getting a good look in there. He doesn't have to play serious midfield minutes, but taking a little bit more of the slack than he did last year. And then there's someone like a Devin Robertson as well, who's in this side and pushed to a little bit more of a defensive role. Does he take more stoppages? Uh, just an example. But I think Brisbane will have one eye on, on the future iteration of what this midfield looks like. And if they can make this happen smoothly without obviously seeing a drop in performance in 2024, then that effectively pushes their window open a little bit longer. That being said, it's more about winning games in 2024. But if Fletcher... Ashcroft and Robertson become, you know, locked in starters in their midfield sooner rather than later, then I think it will reap rewards for the Brisbane Lions. The third resolution I have is from a contract point of view, and that is to lock in Hugh McCluggage, who becomes a restricted free agent at the end of 2024. Uh, I just think he's one of their most important youngish players, sort of entering his prime now, I think it's fair to suggest. Now, I don't think it's necessarily realistic that McCluggage leaves the Brisbane Lions, but he is a top-end talent, uh, or potentially a top-end talent. He is from Victoria originally, and as a free agent, he's just going to garner some interest. So naturally, I think this is going to be a big focus for them. He's their biggest fish that's out of contract this year. Jared Berry is probably the other one that might get some interest from Victoria. So from a list management point of view, this is their big, biggest priority this year. In addition to getting enough points for Levi Ashcroft, that should all work out. Sam Marshall is another one they'll add this year. But securing the signature of Hugh McCluggage at some point during 2024 will be a huge priority for the Lions. The next point is I've obviously labeled it as a resolution, but it's kind of more about you know cultivating an advantage they already have, and that is to remain a top two scoring side, which is what Brisbane were in 2023. 
So it's easy to see where the goals come from. Joe Danaher kicked 61 goals this year from 26 games. Charlie Cameron had an amazing year as a small forward. Super consistent player. I always talk Charlie Cameron up, and for good reason. But he kicked 56 goals as a small. Then he got Hitwood with 41. Even Zach Bailey, who kicked 29. That's a very solid return from like a, a medium-sized high half forward who can play on ball as well. You know, there, There's a lot of contribution, a lot of even contribution from this team. And you factor in as well, they're also a top three side for inside 50s. So their scoring power is very legitimate. And that is something they obviously want to harness and maintain in 2024 to remain a good side. Which leads me to the next resolution, and that is probably just about optimizing their forward line mix post Jack Gunston. So Jack Gunston just played the one season at the Brisbane Lions, 17 games, 22 goals. It's a modest return, it's not a bad return, and you could easily argue, oh, they don't really need him, he didn't even play in the grand final. That's true, but I still think there's there's some, still some levers they can pull and some experimentation in terms of finding out what their best forward line mix is. Because Danaher with 61 goals and Hipwood 41 goals performed really well individually. Uh, that being said, could they use another third tall target in that forward line. And the two options that I see are a Logan Morris, who they just drafted uh, in the second round of 2023. Brandon Ryan, they just traded in from the Hawks as well. And both of them are going to be pretty raw, but it'd be interesting to see them just, just play with that a little bit. I think the best case scenario is young Logan Morris comes in and performs better than expected in his first year, because I would like to see a third 190 centimeter plus forward in that team. But like I said, they did play the grand final without Gunston and, you know, they nearly won. The next point, again, is probably just about, you know, maintaining an existing advantage that they already have. And sometimes that's what resolutions are about. But this one is specifically around maintaining their home ground dominance. So without knowing for sure, I'd imagine that Brisbane's home ground dominance would be far and away the best in the league of any team at the moment. They were pretty unbeatable this year at the Gabba. In fact, literally, they uh, had 13 home wins and were undefeated. And I think that backs up a, a season the year prior where they only lost one game at the Gabba. On top of that, they, they had some heavyweight battles at this ground this year. They, they beat Collingwood, they beat Port Adelaide, they beat Melbourne at this venue. And of course, you know, in the home prelim, they beat Carlton, who were a very strong side. On top of that, in the 13 wins they did have at home, their average winning margin was 34 points. So that's some real dominance. And uh, it's just something that Brisbane really don't want to let go of because obviously, if they can replicate that again in 2024, we're probably looking at a very good chance that Brisbane's a top two side. And that's really what it's all about. The next resolution I have is a little bit more critical. And again, we're just really nitpicking here. Uh, that being said, I couldn't help but notice the Brisbane Lions were ranked 18th in the league for tackles in 2023, which, uh, which is just a mind boggling stat when you consider how good they are as a team. They also had the second least amount of disposals. So I also looked at that and I thought, you know, if they're ranked 18th in the league for tackles, it's probably just because they're so good that the opposition team doesn't have the ball. But that's not that's not quite true. They were second least in the league for disposals, which is just crazy to me. Now, looking into this a little bit deeper, there is actually not a very strong correlation between good teams and having a lot of disposals. Like the, the bottom six or so was kind of mixed around. I think Port Adelaide even had the least amount of disposals and were obviously a good team last year. That being said, there is a bit more of a correlation between teams that don't tackle well and teams that don't finish high on the ladder. So my point here being is, this is probably one stat it's fair to suggest Brisbane could improve in. Defensive pressure generally. I don't necessarily think they need to win more of the ball uh, because obviously, like I said, there's not a huge correlation and it obviously speaks to some efficiency that Brisbane have using the footy. That being said, being ranked 18th in any stat, such as tackling, is probably a sign that they probably need to improve on it because it is an important part of the game. And the final resolution is the most redundant one and that's why I saved it for last and that is just get an extra win next year. They were so close to being premiers in 2023 that coming up with reasons of why they didn't win the premiership feels almost a little bit redundant. Obviously, I'm just pointing out things that they can improve to become a better side, and that is part of staying at the top of the ladder is to improve on your weaknesses. It's not about uh, just being the same team each and every year. That being said, they were just one Bobby Hill away from being premiers in 2023. So uh, I guess the what I'm really saying here is that their expectation, their goal this year has to win the flag. You know, they've incrementally improved. They've, they've made finals. They started losing finals, but they were making them. Then they started winning finals. Then they won a final away from home they got better at the mcg they've slowly ticked all these little boxes so the last one left is simply to win the premiership so again bit of a lame one but i think it's fair to suggest that's brisbane's expectation this year is to at least be in the grand final and give themselves a chance to win it but anyway guys that is my take on the brisbane lions it is a, an exciting time to be a brisbane lions fan i'm sure uh, not only are they a good team now but with the talent coming into this list there's no real sign 
that this uh, this little premiership window they've got is going to end anytime soon. So um, good on you. <laughs> it must be nice it's coming from an Eagles fan. Uh, it's been a while since I felt that way about us. That being said, I enjoy your input, guys. So let me know in the comments anything you disagree with or agree with in this video. Add some resolutions of your own. And I really appreciate you watching. So I'll say goodbye for now and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.